In this video, we're going to cover the top seven must know reasons why restaurants fail. You've probably heard the crazy stat that 70% of restaurants fail within the first five years of operations. But if you know these reasons, you can avoid those pitfalls that commonly make restaurants fail while growing your restaurant. This video was actually inspired by a conversation I had just last week where I was at a major restaurant trade show, the International Pizza Expo, and a restaurant owner came up to me at our booth. He pulled me aside to ask for advice and said, hey Adam, I'm investing over $300,000 in opening my own pizza concept, and I wanted to know from your perspective in the thousands of restaurants you've seen, what are the most common reasons why people fail. Then before I could get into the explanation for the reasons I'd seen, he said, skip the obvious stuff, Adam. Don't tell me it's about location. Don't tell me it's about good food. What are the other reasons people fail that might not be obvious to people that aren't in the restaurant industry? And so I started telling him what we'd noticed from the thousands of restaurants that we've worked with. And he pulled out his notepad and starts taking very careful notes. Seeing how valuable he found what I was sharing, I realized Wow, we should probably share this with our restaurant community in a video and break it down into a format that anybody in the restaurant world has access to so that they can avoid these common failure cases and mistakes. So here we are. Like I mentioned, over the past five years, my technology company, owner.com, has been used by thousands of restaurants across the country of every single type. I've personally met and seen the numbers behind thousands of restaurants along the way. So I've seen the dozens of reasons firsthand why restaurants fail. And in seeing those reasons, I've noticed that there's seven big ones, seven big themes that I consistently see repeated that if you know of ahead of time, you can plan around them and end up building your restaurant business without making these mistakes. So for the purposes of this video, we're going to skip all the obvious reasons why restaurants fail, like bad food. Of course, providing good food in the restaurant business is necessary. Or bad management, of course, you have to be a good manager of people to build a team of people that actually makes the business succeed. But obvious reasons aside, let's get into the non-obvious, most alarming reasons people fail that they could prevent if they just knew them ahead of time. Because beyond just food quality, there's also a lot of business strategy and marketing strategy that go into whether a restaurant succeeds or fails over the long run. So let's dive into the first reason. Reason number one, restaurants fail, is not having menu market fit. Menu market fit basically means how much does your menu fit your local market's needs? You may be thinking, Adam, how on earth could I know how my menu is going to fit the market's needs and how it's going to be received by the market? Don't I have to try it and actually start my restaurant in order to figure it out or experiment? And I have good news, folks. The answer is no, not anymore, not in 2023. This is where things get really exciting. You can check exactly how many people want your type of food or your menu items in your area for free online. It doesn't require any sort of technical wizardry. To figure it out, you go into Google's Keyword Planner tool, which they make public and free online, and you type in some terms that are related to your concept that people would be searching for if they were receptive to eating from your restaurant. Like if I were starting an Italian restaurant, say in Santa Monica, I would type in terms like Italian restaurant, pasta, pizza, and then select Santa Monica as the location in Google so that I could get the volumes of people that are searching for terms that are related to my restaurant or menu in that area every month to help me understand how many people are actively searching for what I plan on offering. Then if there were a lot of people searching near me for a specific food type that I plan to have at my restaurant, it would be a good sign because it means that all of those people feel like that need that they have wanting the best pasta or wanting the best guacamole. It's not being met by existing options. That's why they're switching. That's why they're searching for a new restaurant. So you can try and start a new concept altogether that nobody knows they want yet, but it makes it significantly harder to educate people on why to want that type of food. Like if a ton of people in my city are searching for tacos near me, I'd rather create a taqueria and show up in front of those people rather than convincing them that they actually want 
say, Spanish tapas, a totally unrelated cuisine type that maybe a lot of people in my city don't want because taquerias tend to be significantly more popular than Spanish tapa restaurants. If we really wanted to, we can convince people to want tapas. It's a way harder thing to do from a marketing perspective. And as a result, we're more likely to succeed if we just give people what they want and design our menu to fit what they want versus having to convince them to want something else altogether. So to simplify, here's how you know if you have menu market fit. If there's over 500 people per month in your city that are searching for the specific cuisine type that you have, or maybe the primary menu types that you're planning, it means that there's a large unmet need in your city for it. Otherwise, people wouldn't be searching for that specific thing. Like if you see a lot of people searching every month for best pasta or best chicken parmesan or best authentic Sicilian style pizza, it's best to include those on your Italian restaurant's menu and highlight them as dishes on your menu to meet the market demand. Because as people find your restaurant online and look for those specific items that they're searching for, you'll show them that you fit exactly what they already want, thereby converting more of them. People who already love a restaurant nearby with the best pasta or the best chicken parmesan wouldn't be searching Google for those items. That wouldn't make sense. So when people are searching, it means that there's an unmet need that you can fill. Here's another related failure case that I see pretty often. I'll share a story that illustrates it really well. About two years ago, I met a restaurant owner named Juliana who was starting a concept where she was bringing her family's best recipes from Oaxaca, Mexico to Santa Monica in California. The place is actually called Somos Oaxaca, which means we are Oaxaca, which is a region in Mexico, by the way. But a lot of people didn't know what Oaxaca was or what Oaxacan food was. So when they just started, they were calling themselves Oaxacan food over their website and their social media, since that was the specific type of Mexican food that they offered, but they weren't getting many customers. Since like I mentioned, a lot of people in Santa Monica just didn't have a mental connection with what Oaxacan food was. They didn't even know that it was a type of Mexican food and they weren't searching Google for it since they didn't know what it was. But the good news was that the average person in Santa Monica was familiar with Mexican food and tacos. And there were thousands of people every month searching for best tacos in Santa Monica or best Mexican food or best guacamole or all these other terms that she already had on her menu. She just realized that she was describing it the wrong way for new customers to drive mass appeal. So what the owner Juliana did is she began calling her food Mexican food on all of the places that new customers were initially finding her, including her website. And then she was showing off her tacos and her guac for online purposes in all of those places where new customers found her, which was leading to a lot more people finding her on Google. She was showing up higher in the search results for those items. And then once they visited her website, they were significantly more likely to order from her. She took her website's conversion rate from 2% of website visitors into new orders to now over 10% through making these simple changes of highlighting the common Mexican dishes. This made her menu market fit much stronger because there were already over a thousand people per month in her city searching for Mexican food and tacos and guacamole that she now gets exposure to. As a result of this, she gets over 70 new customers every month, like clockwork from Google, through gaining that awareness and positioning her menu and her brand positioning to fit the demand of the market, which is why I call it menu market fit. For online purposes, in those places where new customers will be evaluating your restaurant, I recommend using the menu positioning that has the most amount of people in your market that are already familiar with it and searching for it. So to summarize that first mistake and how to fix it, you start by describing your restaurant with the broad terms that everyone can understand, that appeal to the market need, and then you subtly educate them on the more specific things that make your food unique and better once they understand generally what type of restaurant you are and what your most popular dishes are as well. By the way, if you've already found this video helpful so far, then click that subscribe button down below to make sure you never miss the breakdowns I post on restaurant marketing. Every month, I post a few new videos sharing my learnings from building the leading restaurant marketing platform used by thousands of independents that are just like this video. And hitting that subscribe button makes sure that you stay up to date with those breakdowns, with the latest and greatest in restaurant marketing so that you can continue to grow your restaurant business and keep a close pulse on what is actually working today. So let's move on to the second must know reason why restaurants fail. Reason number two, unclear branding. Let's first define what a brand is. 
A brand is the set of expectations and stories that people have when they think about a company. So when somebody thinks of your restaurant, what expectations do you want them to have? Is it healthy food or is it comfort food? Is it a neighborhood place welcoming families or a trendy restaurant for young people that has more of a hip vibe? To plan and clarify your brand, it's important to start with who your ideal customer is and why they're going to buy from your restaurant specifically. Then work backwards from there. You're going to have a broad base of customers overall from all different types of life as a restaurant, but there's often one specific group that is especially likely to become regulars and you wanna build your brand around them to really appeal. One master of branding in the restaurant world is John Arena from Metro Pizza in Las Vegas. They're one of the top 20 highest volume pizzerias in the entire country, doing over $8 million in annual sales, according to Pizza Today magazine. I've had the privilege of getting to know them super well because they use our platform for their marketing. So I've gotten to see behind the scenes the power of the brand they're able to cultivate. And to them, their brand is everything because it is so important to be clear to the market about what they do and don't do. They pride themselves on being the neighborhood pizzeria for the suburbs of Las Vegas. Their customers are often families or older people from those suburbs who are looking for the best option for a neighborhood pizzeria. Something delicious and comforting and authentic and homey and convenient. And they perfectly customize their brand to communicate that they are all of those things. So everything about their brand tells that story and sets those expectations. Their design, the people who staff their restaurants have that homey, nice, very friendly vibe. It all fits in perfectly with what they're trying to cultivate, that wholesome family culture. When you walk into their dining room, it feels historical and cozy and their logo and website and app and messaging on all of those places also matches. They also have pages on their website, which I'd recommend for any restaurant that talk about how they've been bringing their family's recipes to that community since 1928, about how they've become known as the neighborhood pizzeria, as the place for people to gather and celebrate over good pizza, because they know their customer and they wanna stay consistent with the expectations that that customer has when they're looking for a local pizzeria. If we use a different example of a well-branded restaurant on the other end of the spectrum, the owners of Talk and Tacos, Mo and Omar in Miami, are also amazing at branding, but have ended up with a completely different result because they know they have a super different customer than Metro Pizza, the family place. Their customers at Talk and Tacos are millennials and Gen Z, these young people in Miami who are looking for a more vibrant and trendy and hip experience for good tacos. So as you can imagine, their brand very much communicates that. It appeals to those people. It has vivid colors, neon green and black. It has wild Mexican art. It has loud club music when you're in the dining room. It has these trendy dishes like birria tacos and even birria ramen, which is not even typically a Mexican dish that appeal to Gen Z. So they're super consistent in telling their story. Their story is not where the neighborhood Mexican restaurant, their story is we hustled to build this Mexican restaurant from a food truck because we're super passionate about Mexican cuisine. Whatever it is that your brand stands for, it's important that you know who your ideal customer is and build it around them. Consistency and messaging and story are key in branding. You can't be everything to everybody. You will appeal to different types of people, of course, broadly, but all of the most successful restaurants and specifically independent restaurants know exactly who their customer is, who it is they're targeting and what they believe what they believe about the world, and then they design their brand around those people's expectations. It affects how they design their dining room, what messaging and images they use on social media, what website they use, and so forth. It all comes together to rhyme and to tell a very clear, crisp story about what type of restaurant they are so that they can become known in the customer's minds for a specific use case. If it's not clear to your customers who you serve or what type of restaurant you are, then it is not reasonable to expect people to think of you when they're craving a specific type of food or experience since they don't have the clarity to mentally connect 
you with any specific thing that they're after. By the way, before we go further in this video, if you want me or somebody on my team to share some tips on how you can improve your branding online from what we can see, then comment your restaurant name and the city it's in down below and we'll quickly take a look at your social media profiles and your website and share some ideas based on what we've seen work in all the different restaurant types that we've powered to represent your brand best online. It's 100% for free and all the tips we share will be immediately actionable regardless of whether you use our platform or not. To summarize this point before we move on to number three, almost all of the most successful independent restaurants that I've seen focus on becoming the perfect option for a specific type of customer rather than trying to be everything to everybody. It doesn't mean that they don't serve other customers, but it does mean that their regulars tend to be the same types of people. Okay, so we've covered the top marketing reasons that restaurants fail and how to get them right instead. Now it's time to cover the biggest menu mistakes that restaurants make, which brings us to must know reason number three, why restaurants fail. Improper menu planning and specifically not getting the math right on food cost, which proves deadly in operating a restaurant. In restaurants, it doesn't matter how much in sales you do if you're charging them less than you make in profit on each dish, which is why the best number to watch to keep your costs under control in the restaurant world is called prime cost. Prime cost is a restaurant's food costs plus their labor costs. When you add those together as a percentage of sales, you get the prime cost percentage. In all of the most successful restaurants, prime costs need to stay under 60% and ideally lower than that of total sales to make sure there's at least 40% of gross profit on every order. That's before we subtract overhead like rent, we need at least 40% of gross profit on every order in order to make the math work and leave a healthy net profit margin. Labor cost in 2023 is rising and it's going to average around 30%. There's not a ton that restaurants can do about it other than encouraging online and digital orders. So we're going to skip that and focus on keeping food costs low, but without sacrificing quality. The best way I've seen restaurants do this, both on the independent side and on the large restaurant corporations is not by buying a lower quality of ingredients, which then compromises the guest experience. And it's not by charging ridiculous prices that turn people off so that the food cost can just be completely passed on to the guest for the ridiculously expensive meat, for example, but by designing specific menu items that are designed to lower overall food costs while increasing sales. Menu items that are designed to be upsold with the menu items that have high food costs like meat-based entrees. As a general rule, restaurants should always charge three times more on the menu for the food cost of the dish. Another pro tip is if you have a simple menu like Chick-fil-A, it'll make your operations 10 times easier. You don't need to have dozens of menu items and it'll also reduce spoilage, which keeps food costs down overall. Large menus might work for Cheesecake Factory, but for small independent restaurants, they become deadly because spoilage becomes an issue which drives food costs up, quality control ends up slipping because it just becomes so confusing for the kitchen to have to master like 40, 50, 60 different dishes. It is never worth it for an independent restaurant to have a broad, expansive menu. It's best to specialize in a few dishes that have strong menu market fit. For example, if we're an Italian restaurant, one of our most popular dishes is going to be the chicken parm. The chicken parm is going to cost us around $9 to make for an independent restaurant between the multiple chicken breasts that are involved, the multiple slices of mozzarella, and all of the other more expensive ingredients. It's going to have a relatively high food cost. And if we just tripled it, it would mean that the chicken parm would cost $27 on the menu. But people are usually only willing to pay $20 to $25 for chicken parm. So what do we do? What I've seen work best is charging around $25, which is the high end of what people are willing to pay for that specific dish, the chicken parm, and then making your complementary dishes to the chicken parm designed to be upsold with it and designed as part of the process in taking their order either online or through a server to suggest those dishes to them. Because if we think about the most efficient and profitable restaurant experiences, like McDonald's say, when you order a burger at McDonald's, what do they immediately say next? Would you like fries with that? Or what beverage would you like with that? They're constantly trying to bump that average transaction size because while they have a high food cost on the burger meat relative to fries, which is just potatoes and oil, when they can upsell those potatoes and oil for $3 that cost them 20 cents to make, it is almost pure profit. 
It's not just McDonald's, by the way. Upselling is a key part of every successful restaurant's strategy, and I would go as far as to say that restaurants are significantly more likely to fail when they don't have this math working in their favor. Because when you can add a super low food cost item like iced tea or calamari or breadsticks to an order, there's no additional labor cost on it. So it's almost pure profit for the restaurant and helps them bring food costs as a percentage way down while bringing sales up. It gives the restaurant pure profit and expands those profit margins really nicely. You can train your servers around this, by the way, and make sure that your online ordering experience is structured in such a way that it does smart upselling as people add entrees to their cart. So they might have the chicken parm entree, and then what I'd recommend doing from an online ordering perspective is then have a modifier that says, select your beverage, optional, diet Coke, iced tea, and then select your appetizer, optional, onion rings, calamari, let's upsell those dishes. In business, the business that can spend the most to acquire each customer usually wins over the long run. It really helps to have strong profit margins so that you're making as much profit as possible from each new customer you get because that allows you to outcompete over the long run. But if you get the math behind your menu wrong, where your food cost is too high, then you're just not gonna be making a profit from each customer, and then what's the point of getting them? Then it's just a matter of time before the restaurant fails. So food cost is really important to get right. That brings us to reason number four, that restaurants fail not building relationships with the regular customers. There's a study that helps us understand the importance of building relationships with regulars. According to that recent study by Upserve, the top 20% of guests make up 80% of profits. And those top 20% of guests, by the way, are the regulars of the restaurant. As an owner of your restaurant, your most important job above all else is to build relationships with your regular customers. Get to know them, make them feel special, make them feel loved when they're in your dining room. This more than anything leads to loyalty and word of mouth and it's the massive advantage that you as a local business have over McDonald's or Burger King or any of these large corporations. We're in the hospitality business in restaurants where people love feeling special and they like supporting their friends in their community. So building those relationships helps drive both. The best way to do this is by taking an interest in your guests, showing them that you care about their experience. When they're in your restaurant, introducing yourself as the owner and letting them sample new dishes that you're considering adding to the menu that you cooked up or that your chef cooked up and asking them how their experience has been, asking them for feedback on your ideas, on your dishes, getting to learn more about them and how they made it to your community in the first place, how they found your restaurant and really just building those friendships. When they order from you online, it's also important to ask for feedback. Automatically sending them an email or a text two hours after the order saying, hey Adam, how was your order? And then letting them rate it on a scale of one to five. Then if it was a positive experience, replying back and showing them how happy that makes you. I can't communicate how much this means to me that you had such a great experience and are now sharing this feedback with our community, thank you. And in the case that they share negative feedback about a bad experience, whatever you do, do not become defensive. That just destroys the relationship. Do not make excuses or blame the guests and say, you're lying, we actually did include the mozzarella, I saw it myself, or that I cook was in the order, or I thought it tastes amazing, you're, you're just wrong. But instead apologize for the inconvenience of their experience. They're always going to feel right from their perspective, so what you can best do to preserve that relationship is say, I'm sorry we let you down, we're going to make this right. I've refunded the Diet Coke. I've refunded the mozzarella. I've seen in over 50% of cases when people leave negative reviews, they're actually willing to take them down. If you apologize sincerely and you text them or you email them and look to make it right. The next reason that restaurants fail, by the way, which is pretty related to this, is reason number five, not staying top of mind with your customer base. As we all know in the restaurant world, it's a competitive and noisy world and people are super busy. So staying top of mind and making sure guests keep thinking about your restaurant after their experience is challenging to do manually, which is why the thing that the most successful restaurants that I've seen have in common is that they consistently work to stay top of mind with their guests. One restaurant that does this really well is Duda Diner, owned by my friend Timory Shibley. Duda Diner is one of the top independent restaurants I've seen in terms of growth and the sheer amount of throughput that they do out of a pretty modest space. What she does is she creates a new weekly special every week and she sends it to their regulars. She sends them an email and a text message saying, hey, we tried this incredible new soup. We think you're gonna love it. Patrick, the chef made it especially for our regulars. 
It's got these similarities to these dishes that are super popular. We'd highly recommend it. And what those regulars do is they become engaged again. They're like, I'd love to try Chef Patrick's new dish. They end up ordering from that restaurant again. It helps Tim Reese stay top of mind with her customers, who by the way, tend to be older families. They tend to love the excitement of constant new dishes. And what Tim Reese does is she also uses our restaurant marketing platform at owner.com to automatically ask people for reviews so that she stays top of mind with them. She gets their feedback and then she enrolls them in email email and text message marketing campaigns when they place online orders. So that it's not only her weekly specials that are reminding them to order again, but then the system is automatically sending them twice weekly emails saying, hey, we noticed you liked our meatloaf. You're also going to love our eggs dish for breakfast or the various other dishes that she's trying to promote. You can also use cloud-based point of sale systems like Toast or Clover or Square and integrate with them with like a marketing automation platform like MailChimp to try and cobble this together and make it work. But the reason we built owner.com as a platform is it takes all of these complicated moving pieces of knowing exactly who ordered what and who the regulars are and who's opted into marketing communications and just automates it for the restaurant so that we can constantly send emails and texts and push notifications that are relevant to guests, that tell your story, that help you stay top of mind, but without coming across as too pushy. Reason number six, restaurants fail, is a bad online first impression that disappoints guests. To prove this point, I have a jaw-dropping fun fact for you. 93% of people check a restaurant's website before visiting that restaurant according to a recent study by Single Platform. 93% of people are checking restaurants' website before actually visiting them. That means that it's going to be the first impression in almost every case for customers, which means that it may not be a fun fact if your website isn't giving people a good first impression because it means that it is costing you customers. More than any other online asset, it's worth investing in that website to make sure it gives the guests an amazing first impression of your restaurant that when they hear about it and Google it or find it on searching for your type of food in your area, that they're like, wow, I've got to try this place. It's awesome. Empowering a restaurant marketing platform, I've literally seen the numbers behind thousands of restaurant websites because that's part of what my company does as part of our website builder. And there's one winning formula that I've seen work extremely well, regardless of restaurant type, for driving an amazing first impression that takes the average conversion rate from website visitor into actual new customer. And here's the way that formula works. In the very first section on the website, you've got a phrase at the very top that helps the guests quickly understand what the restaurant specializes in and its story. An example of this would be our family's recipes brought from Sicily, Italy to Lakeside, California. And then a great picture of the pasta. We now know it's an Italian restaurant brought from Sicily, family run, family focused. And that mouthwatering picture of a popular menu item is also important because in the restaurant world, people eat with their eyes. That example came from Ottavio's Italian restaurant. Since their website is converting new website visitors into new customers at 10 times the industry average. It's more than 20% lately rather than the industry average of 2%. The first phrase of their restaurant's website tells their story and their cuisine type. It says, our family's recipes from Italy brought to Lakeside. Very simple, we know it's an Italian restaurant, we know it's run by a family, authentic, and based in Lakeside. Boom, we've got a lot of information now as prospective guests, and we're intrigued enough to keep scrolling. So what we've communicated, hinting at our story and what type of restaurant we are, then leaves another question on the guest's mind. Okay, it's an Italian restaurant. What are some of the dishes that are most popular at this specific Italian restaurant? It turns out that that's what they immediately wanna know next. So we've tested this extensively and we've found that then you include the most popular dishes immediately under that, including pictures and the titles of the dishes so that people can continue to eat with their eyes, become intrigued, become excited about what's popular at this restaurant and boom, we're showing them the most popular dishes in the section immediately after that initial summary section at the very top. Then what do they wanna know next? Now that they know what type of restaurant it is, who it serves, the types of dishes, is they want to know, can I trust this restaurant? Do people in my community think it's actually good? Which is why under the most popular dishes, I always recommend showcasing reviews in the next section. I see restaurant website conversion rates consistently go from like 2% to 3% to over 15% by implementing this simple formula for the restaurant's homepage. Other helpful sections to have underneath reviews are frequently asked questions section, where you answer the most common questions that might be on a guest's mind, like, do you have any food that are vegan? Or what's the parking situation like at your restaurant? This makes it easier for them 
to understand all of the complexities of going to your restaurant and really simplifies it for them. I'd also recommend a section and a page describing the restaurant's story so that they can connect with the brand and the origin of the restaurant itself. And another section describing the most unique things about the menu, what makes it different, why this specific type of Italian restaurant is made from a special region in Italy where all of the most famous chefs come from, for example. Here's all the things that are special about our menu. Here's the quality of ingredients we use that are locally sourced and so forth. That brings us to the last reason that I see restaurants consistently fail, which is a high turnover of staff, which then leads to poor customer service. The more successful people I meet in business overall, the more convinced I am that our success or failure as entrepreneurs ultimately comes down to the team that we build. I've had the blessing of getting to learn from some of the most successful people in technology and in restaurants. In the tech world, for example, we have the founders of over a dozen billion dollar companies as investors and owner. They include the founders of Instacart and Tinder and Dropbox and various other major technology companies. So I've gotten to learn this part of business from each of them. They all have this in common, but it's not just the tech industry magnets. In the restaurant world, we have other super successful people like Kimball Musk and Marcus Limonis from the show The Profit. They each own dozens of restaurants and they're both investors in my company. And they agree with this principle. In addition to these business legends in technology and restaurants, I've gotten to know hundreds of restaurant owners that are making hundreds of thousands of dollars in profit from between one and five restaurant locations that they own. These tend to be customers of my platform and they also share this belief. You're probably thinking, Adam, cut to the chase. What is the belief that all these people share that they all use to operate their business on? By the way, I don't say this to impress you. I say this because they all have something in common, which is critically important to learn and internalize as a business owner that I wish I'd understood sooner. Want to know what it is that these business success stories in tech and restaurants all believe? Of course, they all believe that people are their biggest asset. They all live it. They all believe that if you take care of the people in your business, that the profits will take care of themselves. Rather than just hiring for availability, who has experience in being a server that's available to join my restaurant? Okay, they're hired, we will got them on the team. What they hire for is culture. They look for people who are kind and optimistic and who create a fun environment for themselves and their coworkers and other customers, by the way. Customers consistently rate customer service as a top reason why they support restaurants. It's not just, whoever's available with relevant experience that they hire. They filter more for the interpersonal cultural fit than they do for the experience. When restaurants get this wrong, it is absolutely deadly because when you have bad apples, they poison the batch, they make poor culture, and then the customer ends up getting treated poorly, which leads to very low retention rates. Some level of turnover in the restaurant world is of course unpreventable, particularly in entry level roles as servers or line cooks or bussers. But one of your most important jobs as the owner of the restaurant is to be an amazing recruiter and retainer of talent, to create an environment where people really want to work and can feel like they can and show up and be their best selves and live in a beautiful state that then colors the experiences of the customers in the restaurant. The most common way that I see restaurant owners do this successfully is recruiting young, hungry people who are willing to work part-time while they're in school or just getting out of school, that want to develop skills, that want to get to know the local community, like maybe students from a local community college or something along those lines. And then letting those people be your front lines and gradually showing them how to be supervisors, how to be managers, how to actually think as business owners, showing them how various parts of the business work so that they're not just earning, but they're actually learning, they're growing as people. That is what keeps the most hungry, ambitious people engaged. It's possible that good people will apply on job boards or maybe on your website as you begin to develop a reputation in your community. But the most successful restaurant owners I meet are relentless recruiters. They go find the talent rather than expecting the talent to go find them. They look online. They reach out to people in their community. They notice, hey, that person in church seems really charismatic or that person at the grocery store seems like a rock star. I'm going to get to know them and convince them to join my restaurant. In my own business at owner.com, even though we're at scale now, we have a full-time talent team, I still spend over 30% of my time recruiting, building relationships, evaluating people, reaching out to people who I think are going to be a good fit. When I meet people in random situations, I try and figure out whether there's a way to fit them into my business if they seem extraordinary. Like I mentioned, the most important thing to the young, hungry people is going to be growth potential. So if you can show them potential for growth, potential for learning, that's what's going to really appeal. And these people are rare, so it is going to be hard work. But to get them, if you communicate how joining your restaurant could help them learn and eventually earn more, 
That's what is key to attracting them. If I were a restaurant owner, I would also be super transparent about the numbers and my vision for the business. I would show them every week, here's how much we did in sales. Here's what's driving those sales. Here's how much we're doing in profit. Here's how we can drive it together so that they can see the progression. They can see what's actually driving the business and feel like they're learning and growing alongside you in the business. I might even implement a profit sharing system that helps them have some share on the upside or show them how the work we're doing will increase their tips or something along those lines. Then I would consistently drill into them the vision of here's how we're going to expand to multiple locations and here's the positive impact we're having on our community so they can feel like they're part of something that's going to be bigger over time so they can feel like they can envision themselves growing in your business your vision as the owner has to be big enough that other people can fit their own visions inside of it that may sound like a radical approach in the restaurant world but I do that in my own business and I've seen a lot of independent restaurants do this extremely successfully as well, where they have tenured people that have been working there for years and that are thrilled to help continue growing the business. In that neighborhood pizzeria example, that's now number 20 in the nation, they've had people for decades on their team that are so passionate about the impact they're having in their community, that love to see the pizzas that they give away to the local hospitals and shelters, that love to see the expansion to multiple locations over the years. In my own business, we share our metrics with everybody in the company, from customer support roles to the engineering team so that they can also keep a pulse and follow along our success and learn along the way. By the way, beyond just showing them growth potential and painting a big vision, being a really nice person goes a long way. Giving team members free food and thanking and recognizing people for going above and beyond. These things are easy to do, but they're also easy not to do in the day to day as it gets so hectic and frustrating at times. So realizing that recognizing people and congratulating people for doing amazing work is one of the best ways you can compensate and inspire and engage people. Yes, it's a lot of work, but people are the most important asset of any business. And did we expect that building a business that will eventually make us hundreds of thousands thousands or millions of dollars to be easy, of course it's going to be difficult. Of course it's gut-wrenching work. Of course it's back-breaking hours, but that is what we signed up for as business owners. So those are the most common reasons why restaurants fail. To summarize them for you, reason number one is a lack of menu market fit because it is so much easier if there's an existing unmet need in your market for what you're offering than you having to actually convince people to want an entirely new restaurant that they don't even know about. Reason number two why restaurants fail is unclear branding. It needs to be extremely clear what the restaurant offers and who it's for and all of the various touch points of that restaurant need to reinforce that story. They need to rhyme. Reason number three is improper food cost planning because you have to have large profit margins in order to survive in this industry and to thrive in this industry. It's just not possible to make the math work otherwise. You can do it by upselling and making sure that your dishes are priced at around 3x their food costs to ensure that your food costs stay in the right zone and that you're adding additional items that help build more sales and more profit into the experience through upselling, through suggestive selling. Like the example we covered is at McDonald's, when you order a burger, the next question immediately is, would you like fries with that? That brings us to reason number four, that restaurants fail, which is not building relationships with regular customers. As we covered the top 20% of guests, the regulars make up 80% of our restaurant's profits over time. And those top 20% of guests are the real regulars. So it's important to make them feel extra special, to constantly be asking them for feedback about what we can do better, to be giving them free new desserts for appetizers and making them feel valued. Reason number five restaurants fail is not staying top of mind with their customer base because it's a noisy world. And the most successful restaurants are always staying top of mind and breaking through that noise by automating email and text message marketing with relevant messages that remind customers at least once per week about new specials or dishes they might like or events that are happening so that their customers always have them at the top of their mind when they're hungry and so that they always feel engaged and part of this relationship with the business. Reason number six is a bad online first impression that inconveniences or confuses guests. 93% of people, as we covered, check a restaurant's website before actually visiting that restaurant. So it's important that we really nail that first impression. The magic formula for this is that the homepage should start with a simple summary at the very top, along with the picture of the most enticing dish, then a section with the most popular dishes, and then a section with the reviews. 
This formula for restaurant homepages converts like gangbusters because it instantly addresses the most common questions that new customers might have in evaluating a brand new restaurant. Which brings us to the last reason we covered that restaurants fail. Reason number seven, a high turnover of staff leading to poor service. The more super successful people I meet in business, as we covered, the more convinced I am that our success or failure as entrepreneurs ultimately comes down to the team that we build. I've had the blessing of being able to get to know some of the most successful people in tech and in restaurants, and they all have this in common in their philosophy. They value people, they care for the people, and in taking care of the people, the profits take care of themselves. To clarify, some level of turnover is unpreventable in entry-level roles in restaurants. But one of your most important jobs as the owner of the restaurant is to be the recruiter in chief, to be amazing at recruiting, to be amazing at retaining talent through treating people well and constantly searching for amazing new people that you can bring into your business. What I've seen work best for restaurants is recruiting young, hungry people who are open to maybe part-time work while they're in school and then eventually going into full-time positions and who are looking for opportunities that not only help them earn money, which is just table stakes in 2023, but that help them develop skills, that help them get to know the local community, that help them get to know what building a business is like by working alongside the owner and the founder of the restaurant. Some will apply inbound, as you begin to develop a reputation, but like I mentioned, the most successful restaurants are also outbound recruiting machines. Anyway, that brings us to the end of this video. But if you liked this video and you wanna go deeper on the most important way for a restaurant to get new customers online, I made a video specifically on that topic on SEO for restaurants. SEO is the science of making sure that your restaurant shows up at the top of Google when people are searching for what it is that you offer in your area. So you can access that by clicking to the left of me here. And if you want an email, anytime I post a new restaurant marketing video to make sure you stay up to date with the latest in growing a restaurant, then click the subscribe button down below. Boom, that's the end of this video. And until next time, really appreciate you taking the time and congrats on either starting your restaurant or surviving in the restaurant world or in taking the next steps towards opening your restaurant. I'm really excited for you.